I know Satan would love to come and creep in Push me in the deep end, watching as I sink in The Bible said that God's the father to the fatherless The tidal wave of grace that crashes over all of us I took a negative and turned it to a positive Go ask my relatives, I used to do the opposite I'm out here preaching about the life inside his promises I'm trying to tell you, man, he will fulfill the prophecy See, every year I used to say the same apology But this time it was different, I witnessed the move of God in me Hey, Shalawan, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Quidash from One Nation, One Power. And I want to give all glory, honor, and praise to the Most High God, Ahaya, in the mighty name of Yeshaya, and the Ruach Quidash, which is the Holy Spirit. And um, I just want to, you know, come on here real quick, give you guys a quick message, give you guys a quick understanding. I uh, thank the Holy Spirit for leading me again uh, to this understanding. Uh, you know, my lessons are just here to help you. You know, my messages are just here to help you, uplift you, uh, to give you a word in due season when you need it the most. And uh, I believe that this word today is going to help the couples out there. It's going to help uh, the man and the wife out there, this message. And I'm going to use uh, Abraham. And uh, well, at this time, they were named Abram and Sarai. OK, I'm going to use uh, them for an example today. Uh, we're going to go into the book of Jasher today. And we're going to go into the Apocrypha. I'm going to get one verse out of the Apocrypha. My foundational verse. And then we're going to go into the book of Jasher. All right. And, uh, you know, like I said, I want to give all praises to the Holy Spirit. And I pray that this message will help those that are married out there. All right. I'm going to get right into it. Let's go to, we're going to go to our, our foundational verse. We're going to go to Ecclesiastes and the Apocrypha. In the Apocrypha, all right? If you got an Apocrypha. And we're going to go to... We're going to read 25 and verse 1. And it reads... In three things... In three things... I was beautiful... And stood up... Beautiful... Both before God... And men... The unity of brethren, the love of neighbors, a man and a wife, a what? A man and a wife. This is where I'm going. All right. This is the foundation. A man and a wife that agree together, that agree together. Okay. And... <clears throat> That's talking about the Holy Spirit. That's talking about how the Holy Spirit comes in your life even more when a man and a woman agree together. All right. So I wanted to go into this story. All right. And it is about Abram in Egypt and the famine. Okay. This is uh, when Abram left um, his home and took all his household with him. You had Lot, you had Sarai, you had, you know, all, all the handmaids. And they were going uh, to Egypt because there was a great phantom where they lived. Okay. And uh, <laughs> just give you the, con I'm, I don't want to read the whole story because it's pretty long, but give you the context. Sarai was a beautiful woman, okay? And Abram was scared that when they go through Egypt, the Pharaoh was going to take her, you know, as a wife. So Abram told Sarai to act like they were brother and sister, okay? So I'm going to get straight into the story. Let me just hit the meat. So you guys can get what I'm trying to say. 
So a man and a wife that agree. And they agreed to, to do this when they went to Egypt. Okay. Sarai didn't say, oh no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna uh not not to say, excuse me. I'm Sarai said, I'm not gonna. She didn't come at Abram like, oh, I'm I'm not gonna say I'm your sister. You know what I'm saying? She just said, okay, okay, my lord, I'll do it. All right. So we're gonna we're just, we're gonna go to uh we're gonna start at verse 15. So this is Jasher. Uh, chapter 15, let me see, this, yeah, j chapter 15, and we're going to start at verse 15, <clears throat> and it reads, and Pharaoh beheld Sarai, and she pleased him exceedingly, meaning that her beauty, okay, and it says, and he was struck with her beauty, and the king rejoiced greatly on her account, and made presents to those who brought him the tidings concerning her. Verse 16. And the woman was then brought to Pharaoh's house. And Abram grieved on an account of his wife. So, you know, they went through Egypt. They, 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 they found out that there was a Sarah, Sarai was hiding in a chest. And when they opened the chest, they found her and they brought her to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh's plan was when he when he saw her beauty to make her his wife. And Abram was grieved at his heart right now because he followed the most high on this. You know, he 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 he, he was grieved. He's like, what's going on? Right. And uh, let's keep reading. Let's, let's see what Abram did. And he prayed to the Lord to deliver her from the hands of Pharaoh. So automatically, he knew what to do. He said he got on his knees and started praying. Father, Father, deliver her. Give, give me back my wife. Give me back my wife. I know this is not your plan. I know this is not your plan. Give me back my wife. See, you got to pray for your wife, brother out there. You got to pray for your wife. You know, then there's a lot of brothers out there that just forget about that. Pray for your wife. Women. I mean, uh, men, pray for your wife. Women, pray for your husband. You should be praying for them each and every day. Let's keep reading. Verse 17. And Sarai also prayed. And she did what? Sarai also prayed. So they were in two different places places. Abram got on his knees and Sarai got on her knees. Let's see what she said. At that time and said, O Lord God, thou didst tell my Lord Abram to go from his land and from his father's house to the land of Canaan. And thou didst promise to do well with him if he would perform thy commands. Now behold, we have done that which thou didst command us, and we left our lands and our families, and we went to a strange land and to a people whom we have not known before. So Sarah, he's, she's telling the Most High, we listened to you. We left our families, we left all that we knew, and we're following you, and you put us in this position? What's going on, Most High? Right? Verse 18, and we came to this land to avoid the famine, and this evil accident has befouled me. Now, therefore, O Lord God, deliver us and save us from the hand of this oppressor, and do well with me for the sake of thy mercy. For the what? For the sake of thy mercy. So she knew what to do. She knew what time it was. I'm talking to the sisters out there. Sarah is a great Sarah is a great example of knowing what to do at this time. So if you get yourself in a situation, you know what to do. Just like Sarah, she got on her knees, right? Let's go. Verse 19. And the Lord hearkened 
to the voice of Sarai, and the what? And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Sarai. So you, you, so you see how the agreement was. Abram was praying, right? And then Sarai was praying, but they, did they know that they were praying together at the same time? No, they didn't. But you see how the Most High heard Sarai. Women, your prayers are strong. Your prayers are strong once you know that. He hearkened to Sarai. He heard Abram, but he was really trying to hear Sarai. I'm talking to somebody out there. And the Lord sent an angel to deliver Sarai from the power of Pharaoh. He sent a what? An angel. How many of y'all believe in angels? Because right here, the Most High sent an angel. Ain't that powerful? He sent a ministering angel to save him. Let's keep reading. And the king came and sat before Sarah. And behold, an angel of the Lord was standing over them. Was what? Standing over them. So the Pharaoh was right there. Sarah was right there. And the angel of the Lord was right there. Standing over them. And he appeared to Sarah and said to her, Do not fear. And do, do not what? Do not fear. For the Lord has heard thy prayer. You see that? She must have been living right. She must have been following the Most High. She must have been listening to her husband. The Most High heard her. Sisters out there. Is your prayer this strong? The Most High sent an angel, right? And the king approached Sarai and said to her, What is that man to thee who brought thee thither? And she said, He is my brother. She still stuck with the plan. He is my brother. And the king said, It is upon us to make him great, to elevate him and to do unto him all the good which thou hast commanded us. And at that time the king sent to Abram silver and gold and precious stones in abundance together with cattle, men, servants, and maids, servants. And the king ordered Abram to be brought and he sat in the court of the king's house and the king greatly exalted Abram on that night so the most high, so the most high actually when you look at this spiritually and what after this story and what led on most high was adding things to him but Abram couldn't see that he had to go through a situation where the most high was adding things to him so the pharaoh had a was exalting him right there. Verse 23. And the king approached to speak to Sarai, and he reached out his hand to touch her. When the angel smoked his, him heavenly, the angel did what? The angel smoked him heavenly when he was trying to touch her. The angel was there. And he was terrified, and he refrained from reaching to her. The angel was white. How many of y'all believe in angels, man? I know there's some people that don't believe in angels. But the angel was there protecting her brothers and sisters. Most High is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He don't change. Verse 20, 24. And when, the, and when the king came near to Sarai, the angel smote him to the ground and act thus to him the whole night. And the king was terrified. So the whole night, the king was trying to get at her, trying to get her into bed. And the angel was just knocking him down. And he was ordered tripping out like, what the heck is going on? Verse 25. And the angel on that night smoked heavily all the servants of the king and his whole household on account of Sarah. And there was a great lamentation that night among the people of Pharaoh's house. Verse 26. And Pharaoh, seeing the evil that befell him, said, surely on the account of this woman has this thing happened to me. And he removed himself at some distance and heard and spoke pleasant words to her. Verse 27. And the king said to Sarai, tell me, I pray thee, concerning this man of whom thou camest here. And Sarai said, this man is my husband. He finally told him the truth. This man is my husband. This man is my husband. Everything that was going on that night. 
king's servants were, were, were being smoked by the angel. He was being smoked by the angel. His whole household was being smoked by the angel. Right? And she finally said, this is my husband. And I said to thee that he was my brother, for I was afraid. For I was what? I was afraid. That's why she said that. Some people would be like, oh, she lied. But she was only listening to what her husband told her to say. That's being submissive. But, but hey, the truth had to come out sooner or later. <clears throat> it says, at least it should have put him to death through wickedness. And the king kept away from Sarai. And the plague of the angel of the Lord ceased from his household. And Pharaoh knew that he was smitten on an account of Sarah, and the king was greatly astonished at this. Verse 29, And in the morning the king called for Abram, and said to him, What is this thou hast done to me? Why didst thou say she is not my sister, owning to which I took her unto me for a wife? And he heavenly plagued, and, and this heaven heavenly plagued, as therefore came upon me and my household. Verse 30. Now therefore, here is thy wife. Take her and go from our land. Lease me and all on her account. Lease we all die on her account. And Pharaoh took more cattle, men servants and maid servants, and silver and gold to give to Abram. And he returned unto him Sarai his wife. The Most High came and intervened, and the Pharaoh added way more to Abram. See, you got to see this how the Most High is putting it all together. And check this out. Let's keep reading. And the king took a maid whom he begotten by his concubine, and he gave her to Sarai for a maid, a handmaid. And this was Hagar. This is this all had to come to pass, brothers and sisters. This is deeper than what we think. This all this was being added unto him. He had to go through this situation. So you might be good be, be going through the same situation in your own life, brothers or sisters out there. You might be married, might be going through some struggles, but the most high is just putting you through things to, to, to toughen you guys up, to make you trust each other more. I mean, just imagine after this situation, the love that grew between Sarai and Abram, the more, the more love. They had to go through it and they and they came out through the fire. They prayed together. They asked the most high and everything was added unto him. He, he showed him or the most high showed them that he was with them, but they had to stay faithful, brothers and sisters. I'm going to keep reading this last one. Verse 32. And the king said to her, his daughter, It is better for thee, my daughter, to be a handmaiden to this man's house than to be mistreated in my house after we have beheld the evil and befell us on account of this woman. Well, brothers and sisters, I wanted to come out with this story for the couples out there, a couple that prays together, stays together showing you the agreement that the most high has with the, the man and the wife i used abram and sarai for an example and the angel came and intervened i went into the book of jasher for those of you that don't know about the book of jasher okay i want to read the scriptures real quick if you can see this right here it refers to uh Okay, I'm going to show you why I'm reading this real quick. I'm going to go to 2 Samuel 1 and 18. For those of you that don't know, all right, the Bible refers books to you. I'm going to 2 Samuel 1 and 18. I just wanted to say this because people don't know about this book. This is 2 Samuel 1 and 18, and it reads, Also he bade them teach the children of Judah the use of the bow. Behold, it is written in the book of Jasher. This is 2 Samuel 1 and 18. And you also could get a second precept. Okay. You could go to Joshua 10 and 13. 
Joshua 10 and 13. Joshua 10 and 13. Let's get it. We want a second priest. We want a second witness. We want Joshua 10 and 13. Okay, and it reads, And the sun stood still, and the mood stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon the, their enemies. Is it not this written in the book of Jasher? In the book of Jasher, brothers and sisters. But I gave you two witnesses that's telling you it's, it is written in the book of Jasher. So go ahead and get this right here, brothers and sisters. I want it to be apocrypha. Okay, this is an apocrypha that they took out of the King James Version Bible. All right, if you get a 1611 edition, it's in there, brothers and sisters. I'm going to read this scripture again. This is uh, Ecclesiastes 25 and 1. In three things I was beautiful and stood up beautiful, both before God and men. The unity of brethren, the love of neighbors. Listen to this. A man and a wife that agree together. A man and a wife that agree together, brothers and sisters. Well, I want to say shalom to y'all. Uh, y'all have a blessed day. May the Most High Ahaya in the mighty name of Yeshia and the Ruach Kodash. So be it.